All right, guys, so you know what animal we're going to be talking about today? Rhinos! Rhinos, okay. So you remember before we talked about the even-toed ungulates, right, which is an order of mammals, which are a class of vertebrates, which are a phylum oh. of the animal kingdom. So uh, even-toed ungulates, right, there was a lot of variety in those. There were lots of different families. There were hippos, there were whales, camels, uh, cows, giraffes. Those were all uh, pigs. Those were all different kinds of even-toed ungulates. The odd-toed ungulates are a different order. Uh, their scientific name is called Pariso dactyls, but there's not as many animals to worry about. There's only three different families in the perissodactyl order. And rhinoceros is one of them. And another one is the tapirs, which we're also going to be talking about today. And then the other family, the third family, uh, is the horse family, also known as the equines. And uh, we're not going to talk about those today, but basically horses, zebras, donkeys, those are all equines. So we're not going to talk about those, just rhinos and tapirs. And they're called odd-toed ungulates because they bear, not because they only have one toe, but because they bear a weight on the middle of, of their toes. Um, so let's watch, start out with this video about rhinos. The rhinoceros gets its name from a word meaning nose horn because all species of rhinos have either one or two horns on their nose. There are five different species of rhinoceros in the world. Two of them are native to Africa, and three live in Southeast Asia. The two African rhinoceros species are among the five heaviest land mammals in the world, with large males reaching weights of 5,000 pounds or 2,300 kilograms. Rhinos are big animals. Even the Sumatran rhinoceros, which is the smallest species, reaches lengths of 8 feet or 2.5 meters. The white rhino, which is the largest, may grow as long as 13 feet or 4 meters. Although they have very little hair, mostly on their ears and the tip of their tail, rhinoceros are mammals. That means they are warm-blooded, they breathe air, and they feed their babies milk. Rhinos are herbivores and eat mostly leaves. Some types of rhinoceros eat mostly grass. Others eat leaves from trees and bushes. Rhinos have thick, grayish skin, which wrinkles and folds like plates of armor. Although their skin is thick and strong, it is not enough to protect them from the sun and biting insects. For that, rhinos need mud. Rhinoceroses love to wallow in mud. The more mud they can cover themselves with, the better. Thick layers of mud act like a natural sunblock, preventing sunburns, and make it difficult for insects to bite their skin. Mud wallows also help rhinos to cool off on hot days, meaning that a muddy rhino is a happy rhino. Rhinoceros have three toes on each foot, and each toe ends with a blunt toenail. They have poor eyesight, but keen hearing, and an excellent sense of smell, which they rely on to help them find food and identify threats. In general, rhinos are solitary, preferring to live alone but some species of rhinoceros will live in groups of up to 10 members. A group of rhinos is called a crash. Rhinoceroses usually avoid contact with people, but aggressive males or mothers with calves may charge without much warning. Despite their large size, rhinoceros can charge at speeds of up to 30 miles or 45 kilometers per hour. Although an adult rhinoceros has no natural predators, 
Rhinoceroses are some of the most endangered species on Earth. They are killed by humans for their horns. Rhino horns are made of keratin, the same material that makes our hair and fingernails. But some people believe that they can be used as medicine. Because people are willing to pay so much for rhinoceros horns, many rhinos are killed by poachers, bringing some species to the brink of extinction. People are working hard to try to save the rhinoceros, placing them on wildlife reserves and doing their best to guard them from poachers. Some places are so desperate to protect their rhinos that they will tranquilize them and carefully remove their horns in the hope that poachers will leave these hornless rhinos alone. I have one question. Yeah? Will their horns grow back? Their horns don't grow back. No. So, um, so what we learned, okay, is that there's five different species of rhino. Um, the um, white rhino, uh, lives in Central and Southern Africa, and uh, there are black rhinos in little spots of Eastern and Southern uh, Africa. And then there are Indian uh, rhinos, of which there are very few left, and they live in the Northern parts of India and in Nepal. Uh, and there's also rhinos in Indonesia, in the island of Sumatra, but there are very few of those rhinos left. And as they were talking about, poaching is where you kill an animal illegally. Sometimes you're allowed to hunt animals and kill them, but other times it's illegal to hunt animals because there aren't enough of them. So rhinos are endangered, but people will still try and kill them because they want to take their horn and they want to grind it up and turn it into what some people think is medicine, even though it is absolutely not medicine. But um, people kind of like to trick themselves into thinking that it's medicine and can fix their problems. Most of the time that's in the Eastern countries in Asia, like Vietnam. And uh, it's very, they'll pay a lot of money for it, even though rhino horn is made of exactly the same stuff that makes our fingernails. It's kind of like if you clipped your fingernails and ground it up, it would be the same thing as grinding up rhino horns, but that doesn't stop people. So rhinos might actually, there might not be any more rhinos by the time you guys are talking to your kids. You might tell your kids, yeah, I, or there may only be rhinos in zoos, you know? So hopefully if we can see rhinos someday in the wild, you know, you'll be able to tell your kids, I was able to see rhinos when there were still some rhinos outside of, uh, of zoos. So rhinos, there used to be uh, hundreds of thousands of them all over Africa and Asia, but now there's very few left, mainly because human beings have, uh, have been killing them. Now, oh, can, or, or they will think, can they think that, that rhino horns are, are ivory? Well, no, they don't use them like ivory. They're not strong like ivory. They grind them up and they pretend that they are medicine, which they certainly are not. And uh, so rhinos- they're basically killing rhinos for no reason. They're killing rhinos for nothing, basically, yeah. Um, so um, rhinos, you know, are very big animals. Some species of rhinos are bigger than hippos, which makes them the second largest land animal after elephants. And they don't eat meat, they only eat plants, but they have that horn for defense. And if they think that someone is attacking them or their family, they will get very angry like hippos and they will charge you. And we can see a video about uh, rhinos and what they will do if they think that they are being threatened.
so we just got our last group of animals. I don't know if you guys have even ever heard of these animals before. The tapir. Tapir. Have you guys heard of those? No. Okay. So they are um, not as big as rhinos and they don't have a horn. Um, they are, uh, they're not in Africa. They're in um, Mexico and the northern part of South America. And there are also some in Southeast Asia, which is like, I guess, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, those countries like that. But they're um, also endangered, um, which uh, means, you know, that they may become extinct. They may die out if we're not careful in trying to pr preserve them. They are uh, herbivores, which mean they eat what? What does herbivore mean? Grass. Right, they eat plants, right? Plants. They don't eat meat. But why and, are they hunted? Well, I don't know exactly. I don't think it's that they're hunted so much as that humans keep on taking away their habitat, like cutting down their trees and building cities where they used to, where the tapirs were living. They also are known for having that kind of like a short trunk, all right? That's called a proboscis. That's basically like the Greek word for, for nose. So they have a short, a, a short trunk. So that's how you can recognize uh, a tap here. Okay. So we're going to watch uh, one video about tap ears. Say hello to the taper. It looks like a large pig, but it's really more closely related to rhinos. Like a rhino, each toe on the taper's foot has its own separate hoof. Besides their special toes, tapers have a special nose. Their nose and their top lip are combined into a flexible snout. The taper can stretch its nose way out and wiggle it back and forth. What do you think the taper uses that special snout for? This is Rachel. She has an amazing snout. It's not as long as an elephant's trunk, but it's just as handy. Watch how she uses her nose to eat these leaves. Tapers live in forests, munching leaves from bushes and eating fruit that has fallen from trees. They can stand in one place, sniff around, then use their nose to move the food into their mouth. Rachel is a Baird Taper from Mexico and Central America. She lives at the zoo with some capybara. Other kinds of tapers live in South America, and the Malayan Taper lives in the rainforests of Asia. This Malayan Taper is with her baby. A baby Taper is called a calf. Some people say a taper calf looks like a walking watermelon. Those markings help the calf blend in with the shadows in the forest, making it harder for predators like big cats to find it. What makes a good home for a taper? A place to take shelter and a place to swim. Tapers like to spend a lot of time in the water. Even youngsters can swim when they're just a few days old. Of course, it takes some practice to get good at it. From their toes to their nose, on land or in water, tapers are really cool. So uh, one thing to remember is that tapirs, even though they're not aggressive uh, and they're not very big animals, they can be dangerous to humans. Any animal can be dangerous to humans if they feel like they're being threatened or if you're careless around them. So even cows, horses, goats, can be dangerous to humans if you're very careless on how you treat them. And there has been a case of a person, a zookeeper, who actually had their arm torn off by a tapir when they made a mistake while they were handling them. So uh, they're not as dangerous as hippos or uh, rhinoceros. Torn off? Yeah. yeah. Um, but like I said, any animal can be dangerous um, when it's uh, not taken care of correctly or handled carefully by a human. So that's all for now. The even-toed, oh, sorry, the odd-toed ungulates, rhinoceroses, and tapirs, and bye-bye. Uh,